Hello, I'm Entrisim and welcome to Let's Play Stellaris. Now, those of you who don't know, Stellaris is the new grand strategy space exploration 4x game by Paradox. The same people who made European Universe 4, which you may have gathered I rather like by the number of episodes on my channel. Uh, now, this is the pre-release. It does come out Monday. This is, of course, being a Thursday at 5 a.m. I probably am streaming right now, by the way. You want to go check Twitch. Um, but yeah, it's actually not out yet. Now, also, I can't actually mention how good it is because uh, review embargoes again Monday. This is a pre-release sort of thing, though, where I can play the game, I can show you, and I can be like, the game may be good. I don't know. I can't say. But let's play the game a lot. There's, yeah, a lot. So we're going to dive in. And have a go. Okay, so we're gonna go new game. I've been looking forward to this game for so long. Oh my god, I love space games. Um, right, we're gonna go create new. So basically, you can pick like a, a different culture, etc. There are a couple of pre-maids here. You can be the United Nations of Earth, which is like, oh, if Earth were good, and then there's the Commonwealth of Man, which is like, if Earth were evil. Red lasers, it gives it away. Um, then there's like military dictatorship, divine mandate, despotic hegemony, uh, scientific directorate, peaceful bureaucracy. Direct democracy, and they're all different things like molluscoids and mammalians and fungoids. Like, this guy's a little fungus dude. Oh, this guy's an arthropod. Is that like, no, that's that. Sorry, that's a little mouth there. There's two eyes, one on each side. I thought that was like one giant eye for a moment. Uh, we're gonna go create new. We can do random if you want to just like randomize something, but we're actually gonna make our empire and then we're gonna make it great again. We've gotta make it great again. Um, I imagine that it was great at one point, and then you realize that there was space, and then you're like, well, we're not great. There's more space to be colonized. So you've got to make yourself great again. It's because you're changing the boundaries. So appearance. We can be mammalian, reptilian, avian, arthropoid, molluscoid, fungoid. Fungoids are some of the most fun. These these are really all fun guys right here. It doesn't work if I say fun gals. It's, it's, a, it's a rather um, sexually e exclusive joke. Exclusive? Yeah, I guess it is. No. To be fair, though, you know, the problem with these guys is there isn't mushroom on our planet for them. Okay, I'm going to stop with the fungoid jokes. If I pick fungoid, the problem is I'm just going to make those jokes all day. Uh, Molluscoid. Oh, my God. That has to be the... Yeah, that's scary. That guy I like. He's like kind of like Space Cthulhu. Mm, he's probably more Space Cthulhu, but I like this guy. Um, arthropoids. You can basically play as chrysalids. Avian. Oh, I might go avian. <laughs> space parrot! Not, not single eye space parrot. That, that just doesn't seem like a good idea. <gasps> space penguin. I like the combination of sort of the, the robes making him look like he's, he's he, you know, he's, he's wise. He's a wise penguin. You don't even look that much like a bird. Oh. You look like an evil bird. <laughs> ah, I'm plotting bird. Look at my hands. Are they hands? Uh, maybe. Um, birds are tempting. Oh, I like this one. Female. Okay. Uh, reptilian. Number of different stars. Oh my god, those guys are freaky as hell. I mean, I'm not like space racist. Xenophobic. That's the one. I'm not xenophobic, but. And then you've got mammals. You've got, you know, humans. And then... I have no idea what you are. Um, space fox. Basically all the furries. Um, <gasps> no. Cat. We need a kitten. We need kitten DLC. Or a mod. Kitten mod. <gasps> Duckbill platypus! Okay, we're gonna, we're gonna go with... Yeah. We're gonna go with you. Space hawk. Okay, so I hit next. It'll take us to name. Um, and we're going to be Elysian. Wait, wait, are we, are we singular Elysium. And then plural, we're Elysians. Adjective. Of Elysium. Yeah, okay, that makes sense. Right, next. Name list. So you can pick like a name list basically and it'll derive your leader names, your ship names, your fleet names, your plant names from this name list. Uh, so you can load like Reptile 3. It's like, my name is Mar Maxodoc. My ship name is Lorod Declor. My planet name is Faradex. Now my fleet name is Dronolog Void Skulkers. Or you could pick something more mammalian like Mammal 1. Or 
There we go. Rapid Strike Fleet, Joint Expeditionary Fleet, etc. I mean, there are actually like two flavors of humans as well. So you've got, you know, San Fernando, uh, the Arbuskir Fleet, Jirga, Vladimir Habsburg. However, I'm going to load up my own mod. And I know, I'm playing a mod on the very first time. The reason is, it's just Patreon list names. It's, don't worry, it's just a name list. Um, it's quite easy to actually mod Stellaris. Surprisingly easy. It's really fun, actually. Um, but yeah, basically, if you're on the Patreon list, your name is now in the game. And let's put a ship prefix in, actually. Let's put uh, HMS. There we go. So we've got leader name, Gip Gip. Ship name, HMS Skingen. Fleet name, Excalibur Fleet. Like at least, oh, I... This is not from Patreon. I was like, well, fleet names need to be proper fleet names. Planet names, uh, I just got a load of planets from, like, um, mythology and stuff. So you see the Lysium's in there. Hell. Um, I think a lot of these are actually bulked out with the, just the general name list. But you see you've got Niflheim, etc. in there. And let's pick a home planet. So there's, like, a number of different types of home planet you can have. And this means that you'll be able to colonize this kind of planet, but you won't be able to colonize the others. At least not initially. You will when you get tech. So, for instance, Arctic Preference. You can see that, oh, we're Arctic Habitability, 8%. And then the ones next to it are 60. And then it's down to 20 for Arid and Continental. And we won't be able to colonize Tropical or Desert. And if we go Continental, you won't be able to get Arid or Tundra. If you go Tropical, you won't be able to get Arctic or Tundra. You get the idea. Basically, you'll have issues with the two opposite. These two are like 20%, so it's not really worth it. These two are 60%, so, you know, you can do it. It's not optimal, but you can do it. But... You can pick any kind of world you really want, depending on the feel. And honestly, I, I kind of like the Arctic idea. I mean, you know, I'm kind of a cold weather person anyway. Like, you know, summer, it's just like pollen and hay fever and stuff. I mean, you, winter? Yeah, give me a good winter. I say this, I mean, live in Britain where our winter's like, oh, it's like minus five, this is terribly cold. And everyone in like upper Scotland and Canada is just like laughing at me right now. Um... They'll be like, you don't know a real winter. Goldstream Drift, baby. It's brilliant. Um, I'm gonna go for... Ooh. Could just do Continental and be done with it. What's the point, right? What's the point if you're gonna do something normal? Let's do something crazy. We're gonna be birds that live on an Arctic world. I mean, an ocean will be okay, but then you can't really, like, as a bird, you can't really sit down very easily. Maybe, we'll, oh, maybe with, like, seabirds. Ooh. I like this plan. We're going to be... No, no. Because it makes more sense to be a land-based bird, and then when we do something else, like a molluscoid, it could be from an ocean world. We're going to do Arctic. And homeworld name is... Uh, Elysium. Star name... Is... Elysia. Star and system. Sol, Deneb, or random. We're going to go random. And city appearance. Okay, so this is like this just makes a difference on you, like the background onto all your worlds. So we can go for like fungoid, and you see they're all shaped vague like funguses. Um, these are the like most structurally unsound buildings ever. Uh, Motoscoid, mammalian, reptilian, just sort of more tougher on the outside, I guess. Um, oh, sorry, that was that's probably this is Motoscoid. And then there's avian, which is more sort of open and three out to the air, because, you know, you can fly. And I think I'll go with avian. You know, it fits It fits us being birds. So we're going to go avian. Uh, ooh, I missed ruler. <gasps> it doesn't make a difference. Let's have a female ruler, right? Let's, let's break the mold. Color variant. I'm kind of liking that one. I'm kind of liking that one. Clothes. Right. You're going to be like our, our leader. You need to have something royal. Yeah, I mean, that's, that's pretty royal. It's not really the listing colors, but we'll go with it. And let's randomize your name. Sugar Soap is our leader. Okay. Right. Traits. I missed out traits before. I'm actually going through this way too fast. Uh, traits. I was, I'm just sorry. I'm like a kid in a candy shop right now. There are fun things to do. Um, right. We've got trait points left, too. Trait picks left. So you can pick up to four traits. You don't have to pick that many, uh, but you only have two points to spend. Now, you can get more points by taking something bad. So, my first bet is normally to go and, like, find something bad that gives us more points. So, you can be, like, non-adaptive. That means we get minus 10% habitability. Not great. I like to expand fast. I tend to be fairly expansionist. Slow breeder. Uh, growth time. Now, when I did a, a test playthrough and was, like, messing around the game before, I did do slow breeder. And the problem is, 
it does sort of stimmy your growth. You can still like colonize pretty quick, but it means that your worlds don't get to the next potential as quickly. Which isn't isn't ideal. Um, what else is there? Slow learners, leader experience gain, minus 25%. So your leaders all like get next levels much slower. Not great, especially at the beginning where you want your leaders, especially your scientists, to be pretty damn awesome. Weak, less army damage. That was not bad. Um, it does mean your armies won't be optimal, but you can always, hopefully by the point you're really getting into the nitty gritty of needing a good army, you can hopefully have another client species or someone you've conquered that can be your new army or whatever. Or maybe you've got like some sort of crazy things you've made. Maybe robots. And then you can have an AI rebellion. Yep, that can happen. Um, Silitary. Migration time. And resettlement cost. Ooh. I might go Silitary. Because, right, your pops can migrate. It depends if you have the... There are certain policies in the game. Depending on what other government type you have, you can have policies turned on and off. Um, basically, by default, unless you're a special government type or you have chosen it differently, um, people can migrate between worlds whenever they want. Just take some time. Uh, this forces them to kind of slow down when they move, and I might go for it. Solitary. They basically reduced happiness. It's not great. Repugnant. Other species are happy, less happy around you. Uh, not great. Um, decadent. Resource output without slaves. I don't think we'll go slaves this first run. Maybe in future. But for now, we're going to stick without slaves. Um, okay. So we've got three points and we can pick three traits. We can pick like three ones or we could... Ooh, extremely adaptive. Plus 20% habitability. Um, no, nah, I want to get some fun ones. Right, so we could go natural any of these, which gives us energy output, sizing output. Um, society output. Um, so en engineering, physics, and society, those are the three like research types. So we could buff one of those. Um, intelligent, that gives you a buff on all of them of 10% rather than 15%, but it costs two. Industrious, more minerals, which are like one of the main resources. Energy credits is the other main resource. Food, that's for growing your individual planets. Um, growth time decrease. Talented, leader skill levels. That's pretty useful actually. Quick learners, uh, quicker um, XP, very strong. More minerals and more army damage. Strong, minerals and army damage. Communal, happiness. I mean, improved happiness is pretty nice. Um, charisma, other species happiness, plus 1%. Conformance, now ethics divergence. This is kind of a really cool thing in the game in that um, your government and your, your core people will think a certain way, but the more you spread out and the more you have people isolated or come into contact with other cultures, they have differing ethics. They, they start to diverge from the core beliefs. And this can lead to some factions in your population wanting different things. Um, right, enduring gives us plus 30 years lifespan. Venerable gives us 120 years, but I don't think we're going to be able to afford four. Um, I might go for enduring just to have longer, like, leader life so they can get more XP over the course of their life, and we don't have to change them out so quickly. Uh, what else? I'm going to go for... We could go intelligent and just get, like, all the tech. Yeah, there we go. So we've got a pick left. We've got no points. So that's fine. So we're going to be, like, wise and old. We are... We live long, and we think much, but we're couch potatoes. Sounds like my life. That would actually be a little bit uh, uh, self-aggrandizing. All uh, right, so yeah, we're Arctic birds. Right, government and ethics. Here's where it gets fun, right? So you've got ethic point three. So you can pick your ethics. And you've got this sort of weird, uh, I guess it's an octagon. It's more like a circle, really. And you can pick, oh, I want to be militarist. Or I want to be militarist two, which is like fanatic militarist. And these give your empire different things. Um, so I did actually ask Twitter what Twitter thought I should have, and Twitter was like, you should go science. So science is materialist. You can see that pop modifiers, uh, physics, society, and engineering all get plus five. So we're certainly going to be uh, materialist. We don't know whether we're going to be fanatic or not, but we're going to be materialist for now. And you can see that, by the way, the background changes, which is really cool. Oh, because I've got multiple ones selected. Let me just, there we go. <gasps> yeah, so we're going to be uh, materialist, sorry. Now, the other one was individualist. I did ask, did people want me to go freedom or not? Basically, individualist is like the right of the individual above the right of the collective. And you'll notice that if I go across on the circle, collective 
<gasps> Basically, um, the opposed uh, things tend to not like each other and tend to be more about, say, we're about material, about self-gain, about science, whereas this is more spiritual. Um, over here you've got xenophile versus xenophobia, pacifist versus uh, militarist, and individual versus collectivist. So collectivists are all like, yeah, it's the good of the race. You can ruin someone's life for the good of the race, right? That makes sense. It's just, you know, logical. And then they're like, yeah, slavery's fine. And food consumption, oh, we didn't need as much food. And then, you know, you get fanatic and it's like, oh, slavery trumps 100%. So they can go like really hard for the slaves. Um, whereas individualist is like, yeah, we don't really like slavery tolerance. Um, we don't like ethics divergence, but energy credits goes up because I assume it also means like more capitalist. Uh, Twitter also was like, yeah, we should have that as a secondary thing. So we'll have individualist materialist. Now the question is, what do we do with our third pick? We could knock this up to fanatic. I'm pretty tempted. It'll give us uh, another 10% physics, society, and engineering, which couples with our previous thing to mean like 20% in all categories, which is really good. Um, or we could go militarist. And you see that the problem with militarist is it increases our alliance influence costs. So getting alliances costs you influence, which is another resource. I'm probably not going to go militarist just because it's expensive to do in a certain, like, resource. And if we just don't pick a side between militarist and pacifist, especially with militarist because it's expensive, um, we can be a bit more flexible how we're going to play the game. Pacifist isn't as bad. Uh, rivalry influence gain is less. Basically, the way you gain influence is a little bit slower. Your arm damage goes down and your war happiness goes down, but you get more food and you get more embassies. It's honestly not bad. Pacifist level 2 is pretty heavy, but pacifist level 1 is... Uh, Pretty nice. Um, that said, these do influence what government you can get. So look at these governments. You've got stuff like military dictatorship. You must be militarist or fanatic and not have individualist or fanatic individualist. So if we take off individualist and I select military, you notice that, oh, now we can be a military dictatorship. And all the different, like, all the different, like, government forms have their own things. Like, scientific director, which is probably what I want to go for. Research alternatives, plus one. So when you're choosing research, you can pick another research to pick out of. Um, you also get one more leader. Or you could go despotic hedge money. Um, or should I pronounce it hegemony? Mm. Uh, research speed, plus five. Oh, re survey speed, plus 10%. Oh, this is so good. Uh, the government is a materialistic form of autocracy where citizens are viewed as little more than cogs in the state machinery. Efficiency and technological process valued above all things. The problem is, if you have individualist, it gets blocked out because you can't be a society that's all about pushing forwards as a society, ignoring sort of the will of the individuals when you're an individualist. Um, so let's take militaristers off as well. And I think what we'll do is we'll go fanatic militarist. Uh, fanatic materialist, sorry. And then we can go science directorate. So holds an election every 40 to 50 years to select a new ruler. We get one research alternative. And we also get one uh, empire leader capacity. That's pretty good. The alternative is you can go for direct democracy, um, core sector plants. So the number of plants you can fit that you can manage like directly rather than turning into a sector where you're sort of uh, subservient to you, but kind of an indirect way um, is higher. Or we could go indirect democracy, uh, lead recruitment cost goes down, lead skill levels goes up, which is pretty nice. Or plutocratic oligarchy. Um, Minerals and energy credits. That's really nice, actually. Plus 5% on both. But I think if we're going to do the science thing, right, we should we should go hard into the science. So that gives us an extra research alternative. The government is a materialistic form of oligarchy where a committee of scientists supervises the government apparatus for maximum efficiency. That sounds amazing, right? You get scientists to supervise. I mean, it's got risk of corruption there because the scientists could get corrupt. But to be honest, I've never I've never seen in real life anyone go, you know what we should do? We should just put the scientists in charge. Like, screw the politicians, let's put the scientists in charge. It'd probably go very badly wrong, because scientists are probably a little bit more naive um, than politicians. That said, academia, my, my god, those are cutthroat people. But we're gonna go for we're gonna do the science director, right? We're gonna go all the way science. It says science in the name, we're doing science. That's what Twitter said to do. We're doing it. Is that everything? Yeah. Uh, Empire name. We are Alyssa. Elysian Empire. Because I believe it was like the Elysian Empire, so it'll be like the so and so collective, or whatever. So I think we don't need a. Because if we randomize it. Oh. Now I haven't put anything in the name list. Adjectives. Elysian. Because the adjective for our name is Elysian. Um, pertaining to. So the empire pertains to Elysium, so it is the Elysian Empire. That's how that works. Flag. Right. What, what can be like the Elysian Empire? 
Um, <gasps> yes, a sword of wings. So much like I knew it was there. And then I need a downward... I mean, I need a cross ideally, but I don't think there is a... Ah! No, there is no cross. There is no cross. Okay, we're going to have to do like a downward... We could do it like sideways, but I don't think that works. I'm going to go downward line. And you have to be white. No, that's secondary color needs to be white. Primary color needs to be blue. Ooh, too blue. Maybe too dark. Can I get anything whiter than that? No. Oh, that'll do. It's fine. So that's our, our Elysian flag there as well. Maybe I can mod these in as well. I don't know. Um, next. Starting weapons. Okay. So you get a variety of starting weapons. Um, you get picks from the three basic types. You can go missile weapons, which are in excellent range, but they're vulnerable to inception by point defense systems. They're pretty nice. Um, projectile weapons. These, like, chew through shields really fast. They're fairly short range, though. They're actually the shortest range of all the weapons here. Um, they got a good rate of fire, and they sort of knock back shields really quick. Probably low damage, a bit more than the other ones, and the range is god-awful. Um, energy weapons. These ignore, like, large amounts of armor, like 50% or something, I think, for energy weapons. Um, they're medium range. But I'm going to go missile weapons. Actually, I really like kinetics, but the problem is at the beginning of the game, I do think missile weapons have an edge because no one has researched um, point defense systems. And also because if you shoot from a distance, you're more likely to save your own ship. If you can, like, against low, you know, health enemies when you've got small fleets. Bigger fleets, projector weapons certainly come into their own, especially when people have got shields, which no one has in the very early game. Most people don't have in the very early game. So I'm going to go missile weapons. FTL method. Now, this is something really, really awesome. And, like, I love Sword of the Stars, which is another Forex game from a while back. Uh, not that long ago, but we're talking, you know, eight years ago, I think. More than that. It's like 10 or 11. Oh, my God, I'm old. Um, but the FTL method is really cool because it really changes how you play. So, you've got warp travel. You can just jump from any planet to any planet within range of your warp drive. That's pretty good. Slow, though. It is the slowest method of travel here. Then you've got, uh, I think it then goes wormhole, where you can travel pretty quickly, but you can only travel to places that you've like established a wormhole. Now you can send a constructor over somehow to make a wormhole, but it's just pretty slow. And then when you make a wormhole station, then you can jump to the wormhole station, but you need to be able to jump to a wormhole station. That said, when you do it, it's really super fast. It's really annoying to try and fight people with wormholes when you've got like warp drive. You're constantly trying to catch up to them. And it's really good at being like a defensive thing because you can just jump between your own stations. But to attack, you're much slower because you can have to build a way there or just go very, very slowly. Then there is hyperspace travel. Hyperspace, you have to use certain pre-existing paths. So you can't go from this planet to this planet. You have to go from this planet to another planet to this planet if the lanes say that. Now, it is by far the fastest method of travel. It is incredibly annoying to fight a hyperspace enemy with warp travel because you're constantly trying to catch up to them and they're like, no, I can go super fast. Bing, 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 bing. The issue with hyperspace travel is if you find your route blocked, there's nothing you can do. You have to go that route unless there's another route available. But the other route might take you like a really long way around. There might not even be another route. So I'm not going to go hyperspace travel, although it is really kind of cool for its speed. Because there's a possibility in the early game that RNG might just be like, oh, there's some like alien murderers in your way at this planet and you need to go through this planet to get anywhere. And it might just be like, oh, now we can't expand for a while. It's really kind of cool though, but I'm going to stick with warp drive for now. Now, wormholes are also really cool. Uh, I do need to play them a little bit more to get used to them. My, my game I was practicing was warp travel um, rather than wormholes. But I'm going to play warp for now just because it's, it's a bit simpler. So you can see the warp like mechanics. Wormhole travel though is probably the thing I'll play next maybe. Or maybe I'll just go screw it. I'm going to go like RNG and hope the hyperspace gives us a good path. But for now we're going to go something simple with warp uh, and we'll get moving on it. By the way, the fact that other nations like you can force nations to all have all not really nations. I'm playing not playing EVE anymore. All like space empires can have like all differing FTL like means you have to fight them in different ways. Like I remember fighting a hyperspace enemy and I had to kind of like prepare an ambush for when they came out of hyperspace in a system I knew they'd be going to. It's really, really cunning. Uh, you, if you want, you can force everyone to have the same type of FTL in a match when you set it up. Um, and ship appearance. Mammalian, molluscoid, fungoid, reptilian, arthropoid, or avian. We're going to go avian. We have to go avian, I think, because we're birds. That, that said, maybe I should go mammalian. I mean, the birds do look really cool. I'm going to go birds. Avian it is. We're individualist, fanatic materialists. Um, sedentary, enduring, and intelligent. We have nuclear missiles and warp travel. Avian on an arctic world. 
and with avian cities. And I'm going to save you. Done. Now, galaxy size. We're going to go for the defaults, right? The defaults are 500 stars, not elliptical. I'm going to skip this one, and I'm going to go for spiral galaxy. The reason is elliptical, basically, all the stars are kind of a mishmash everywhere in this ellipse. Um, you can go wherever you want, provided you can get there. I kind of really like spiral. Now, the reason I like spiral is because you have these arms with a little bit more of a gap, and it really slows down um, a lot of different forms of warp travel, like different FTLs, especially warp travel. Uh, because of the gap in between. Warp travel can't go a certain distance. It, it has a limit. The next level of warp travel, let's go further. Next level beyond that, let's go further in a single jump. But it, you can't jump over the gap between the arms in warp one. Not normally. Unless you get really lucky on a spawn of a star, like halfway. But normally you, you have this really tough time getting from one arm to the other. And it really kind of slows down the game and gives you an exploration to do later on in the game. So you don't suddenly know everything. And it kind of means that you will actually have to build up and then you can do a second wave of expansion. And there are also these tactical points where you can pass between arms that become like really important in sort of positioning your empire. It's it's something that I really, really like. So I'm going to go with that. Uh, I'm going to leave it at the default for AI empires. Um, advanced AI starts. This controls how many regular AI empires will start with an additional advantage in technology, resources, and population. They do not gain any additional bonuses besides a stronger starting position. This settling does not affect uh, full empires. So... It's not necessary that everyone gains, like, space ability, whatever it's called, um, inter interstellar um, drives at the same time. So, four of the AI empires out of the 17 are going to start advanced. This can be a little bit awkward if you start off right next to them, but we're going to give it a try. We're going to go uh, normal, any FTL mode is allowed, and we're not going to be playing Iron Man. Let's dive in. And... The Elysian Empire. Government. A science directorate. Ruler is Sugar Soap. Species Elysium. Uh, FTL method. Warp travel. Capital Elysium. Now, the species should have been Elysian, but okay. Um, ethics. Individualist. Fanatic materialist. Traits. Sedentary. Enduring. Intelligent. Arctic preference. In the eons since the first primitive Elysium community, took shape on the snow fields and ice caves of Elysium. Our civilization has spread and prospered. Through science progress, scientific progress, we managed to stamp out the superstitions that ruled the minds of our ancestors. As reason and rationale, thought spread among our people, and the inefficient nation states that we had until then organized ourselves into what expanded, and a council of our most accomplished scientists was given to rule their stead. Now, after the successful creation of several experimental subsurface fields, the finest minds of the Lysian Empire have finished development of the first warp drives. The stars themselves are finally within our grasp. Begin. Greetings, Director. I am Veer, a prototype synthetic intelligence developed by the finest minds of our civilization to serve as your advisor. I shall endeavor to perform my duties with the utmost efficiency. Um... I'm going to shut this thing down. Oh, I feel bad about what I did now. He sounded like he got hurt. Okay, so we are here, near the Shadow Nebula. Fairly near the Galactic Core. You notice that they're actually uh, one of the inside ring planets. Like, there's nothing in here. I mean, that's like a supermassive black hole. So, we've got a lot of expansion to do, and we've got a back against a wall. And, oh, that might be Warp Drive Oneable. I'm not certain that distance is warp drive oneable, but it looks like we might be next to a connection point between the arms. So the plan is initially spread outwards and then see if we can warp drive one over here. Because if we can, I would love to secure this. Now, we've no idea when the enemy or, <laughs> sorry, potential ally races are. But it's going to be fun. Ivy Natural, listen, this is going to be episode zero, effectively setting up our empire. And I look forward to seeing you all in episode one when we actually start... Uh, Kicking ourselves out into the uh, wider galaxy and finding out who awaits us. Uh, if you've enjoyed, please remember to like, not subscribe, please consider subscribing. Especially important since this is like one episode zero of a new series. So uh, definitely lets me know how much you're looking forward to Stellaris. Um, I really am. Yay. Comes out Monday. You should maybe get it. I don't know. I can't say if it's good or not. You can judge for yourself. Let me know if you think it's good or not down below. Also, I'm probably streaming it right now and we'll be streaming it like all day. Along with like million VODs. So have fun with that. Twitch.tv forward slash Atrilisium. And until next time, when we uh, make space great again, stay shiny.